Hey guys, it's Nick. I have a Cobalt plug-in electric lawnmower made by Lowe's that cuts off on me when it is under heavy load. So if I'm trying to cut some tall grass or thick weeds, it will turn off and not start again for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. In this video, I'm gonna explain simply how an electric mower works, how to troubleshoot this problem, and even how to buy the replacement parts cheaply. If this problem happens with your mower and you wanna fix your mower without spending a lot on factory replacement parts, stay tuned. Now, before I show you the troubleshooting, I wanna explain what I found to be the problem. It turns out that this problem is actually a feature, not a bug. You see, these DC electric motors have a thermal switch to protect them when they get overloaded. And the way it works is that this thermal switch lets the current flow through to the motor as long as the temperature is lower than the rated temperature of the switch. If the DC motor starts to slow down and get loaded, then the temperature rises. And so if the temperature gets above the maximum rating, in this case, 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit, then the circuit opens and no current can flow through until the temperature cools down below the rated temperature and then it can flow again. So this is what the thermal switch looks like and after I replace it on the mower, I will show you how to buy the right one and where to buy it very cheaply. So let's go look at the mower now. So here's a look at the Cobalt lawnmower. This is a 21 inch plugged in electric lawnmower. It's pretty simple. So here is the switch. So when you turn the switch on, power comes in through this cord here, AC current. It goes into this square thing, which is a bridge rectifier. And what this does is it changes AC current to DC current because this is a DC motor. So it changes the 120 volts AC to like, I think, 50 or so volts DC to run this motor. And this is a resistor. It's used on startup when there is heavy power coming to this to uh, dissipate some of that and also turn the motor off quicker when power gets shut off apparently. And this is the thermal switch. And so when this gets too hot, when there's too much current coming through here because there's a heavy load or this motor almost stops or slows down to the point where it will burn out if it stops. So this prevents that. So when this starts to slow down, this heats up to the point where this now opens so there's no more current going into the rectifier and feeding the DC motor. So that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot this to figure out where the problem lies if you're having a problem with this mower. So if the mower is not working and the first thing you want to do is check the switch, you don't need to open up the switch compartment. It's better to open this up because you're going to be checking other things here anyway. So you can check the switch by taking off the AC leads to the rectifier and then checking the AC voltage across these leads, making sure you have the 120 volts coming here. Then you know that the switch works. When you turn the switch on, you should get 120 volts here. Okay, so make sure you take the leads off the rectifier so the thing doesn't start accidentally when you turn the switch on. Turn your voltmeter to AC volts and 200 or something close to that so that you can see a reading of 120 volts. And then let's turn the switch and see what happens. Okay, so I'm holding the switch down and it's showing 123 volts. So not only do you know that the switch is working, but there is power in the cable and everything like that, so that's not a worry. So you know you have 120 AC volts going to the rectifier. And then you can check what's leaving the rectifier. Now, the problem that I was having with this intermittent shutting off wasn't actually the thermal switch. It was the wires going from the thermal switch actually broke inside under the sheathing and I couldn't see it. So it did randomly cut off, but at some point it separated so much that it completely stopped. And so the way you figure that out is you check for continuity in this circuit. So 
this switch is normally closed so if you check resistance from one lead to another going through this switch you should have basically zero ohms because there's almost no resistance in there so you set your multimeter to ohms say 20k ohms or 2k or whatever and just so you know if the wire is broken meaning there's no continuity you're going to get infinite resistance but if there is continuity, you're going to get zero resistance. So that's what an open circuit is. The wire is broken. There's no current flowing through. Think of it kind of like a pipe, uh, except that you're looking for a clogged pipe. Uh, a, a completely clogged pipe has infinite resistance. A completely free pipe has zero resistance and the water flows perfectly. So you see that this thermal switch has zero resistance here and so it is working and it is a switch that is normally on meaning the circuit is closed so this wire is just one big wire now the only reason i have to replace this thermal switch is because the old one here when i tried to solder on the leads i guess the solder added some resistance and when it overheated it actually burnt out a little bit so i didn't want to continue to do that so i just got a completely new one and set it up here so now if you want to make sure that your rectifier is good meaning you have the 120 volts ac coming in but do you have dc leaving and going to the dc motor and so you could test it here on these leads but why do that when you can test them here to make sure that these wires are okay and everything that you actually have the DC volts coming right to the motor so take these leads off and I'm taking them off because I don't want the motor to run accidentally when I turn the switch on so set your multimeter to DC volts and somewhere around 100 or 200 if you have that kind of setting because it's going to be around 50 volts so you want it to be in the ballpark of uh, lower than this so I'm going to turn the switch on now and let's see how much DC volts we have coming right to the motor. I turn the switch on and it's showing minus 167 volts. The minus doesn't mean anything, it's just the leads are switched. If I switch them the other way it would show positive. But uh, I thought this was like 50 volts but it's actually 167 volts DC that's going to this motor. So definitely don't don't touch it when you have the switch on and make sure these things are taken off the motor when you're testing them. So now I know that the switch works. I know that I have AC coming here. I have DC leaving here and I have the DC voltage going right to the motor. So everything should be working. If it's not working at this point, then the motor, there's something wrong with the motor or the motor seized or something like that, which it's not. I know I already checked it and uh, I replaced this thermal switch which was the problem so it should start up now let's take a look and so there it is problem solved I can put the cover back on and uh, start mowing my lawn once again so this is where I bought my switches at AliExpress which is like the retail version of Alibaba if you want to just buy one or two pieces of something you come here and you see it's really cheap 41 cents a piece and the store is NTC thermostat is the seller but you have to make sure that you get the specs correct. And so in my case, the specs is, it has to be for 17 amps. It has to be for 130 degrees Celsius. And the switch has to be normally closed because there are other switches that are normally open, which means no current is normally flowing until it gets to that hot temperature. So you don't wanna do that. And you see there's a lot of different options here when you click on the actual listing and shipping is two dollars and 45 cents so i ordered two of them because it's the same shipping just in case one is bad or something like that and i even ordered from another vendor two of them just because i didn't know how long these things were going to take to come from china and they came in about i think about two two and a half weeks or something like that because they're really small and light so they go by the chinese e-packet airmail whatever so it came relatively quickly 
So that's pretty much it. Just know what the specs are on the pieces you're looking for, and you can find it on AliExpress most likely for much cheaper than you'll find it on eBay or Amazon or something like that. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing as this is a new channel and I'm trying to get my subs up. Thanks for watching, guys.